The next major topic we'll cover are enzymes in clinical diagnosis. Plasma enzymes can be classified, depending on their original location, into extracellular plasma enzymes and intracellular plasma enzymes. Extracellular plasma enzymes are the enzymes which have functions outside the cell or in the bloodstream. For example, blood clotting factors. Intracellular enzymes are the enzymes which have functions within the cell, like creatine kinase and lactate dehydrogenase. Intracellular enzymes find their way into the bloodstream when the cell dies or the cell membrane is damaged. In healthy individuals, the lack of plasma enzymes are fairly constant. It represents a steady state in which the rate of release from damaged cells into the plasma is balanced by an equal rate of removal of the enzyme protein from the plasma. An increase in the plasma level of intracellular enzymes indicates damage to the plasma membrane. The level of specific enzyme activity in the plasma correlates with the extent of tissue damage. We can briefly consider functional plasma enzymes. These are enzymes which have specific functions in the plasma. For example, coagulation factors and lipoprotein lipase. There are also non-functional plasma enzymes. These have no specific function in the plasma. This comes out from the tissue as a result of normal wear and tear. Their level is very low in the serum, but during tissue injury, their level in the serum rises. Hence, they help to diagnose the site and extent of tissue injury. Examples include LDH, creatine kinase, and alkaline phosphatase. Here are some biochemical markers of myocardial infarction. The first is heart-type fatty acid binding proteins, or HFABP. This appears in plasma 60 minutes after cellular injury, which is chest pain, peaks at 6 to 12 hours, and returns to baseline by 1 to 1 and a half days. The second marker is creatine kinase, myoglobulin, or CKMB. It appears in plasma 3 to 6 hours following chest pain, reaches peak activity at 12 to 24 hours, and returns to baseline after 2 to 3 days. The third indicator is cardiac-specific troponin T, CTNT, and cardiac-specific troponin I, or CTNI. Cardiac protein, highly sensitive and specific for cardiac damage, appears in plasma 3 to 5 hours following chest pain, reaches peak activity at 12 to 24 hours, and takes about 7 to 10 days to reach normal levels. There are other biochemical markers of historical importance as well. The first is myoglobin. It appears in plasma 2 to 3 hours after cellular injury, or chest pain, peaks at 6 to 12 hours, and returns to baseline by 1 to 2 days. The second is aspartate transaminase, or AST. This appears in plasma 6 to 8 hours after cell injury, peaks at about 2 to 3 days, and returns to normal by 7 to 10 days. The third is lactate dehydrogenase, or LDH. This appears in plasma 6 to 8 hours after cell injury, and returns to normal by 4 to 6 days. Here are some characteristics of plasma biomarkers for acute myocardial infarction. For FAB, the molecular mass is 14.5. The elevation in plasma after AMI is 1 to 2 hours. The peak in plasma concentration occurs 6 to 12 hours, and normalization of plasma level occurs in 1 to 1 and a half days. For myoglobin, the molecular mass is 17.8. The elevation in plasma after AMI is 2 to 3 hours. Peak plasma concentration occurs at 6 to 12 hours, and the normalization of the plasma level occurs one to two days. For cardiac troponin I, the molecular mass is 22.5. The elevation in plasma after AMI is three to eight hours. The peak plasma concentration 
occurs at 12 to 24 hours, and the normalization of the plasma level occurs in 7 to 10 days. Cardiac troponin T has a molecular mass of 37.0. The elevation in plasma after AMI is 3 to 8 hours. The peak plasma concentration is 12 to 24 hours, and the normalization of the plasma level is 7 to 10 days. And finally, creatine kinase MB has a molecular mass of 86. The elevation in plasma after AMI is 2 to 6 hours, the peak plasma concentration is 12 to 24 hours, and the normalization of the plasma level takes 2 to 3 days. FABP is 20 times more specific to cardiac muscle than myoglobin, and it is present at 10 times higher in cardiac muscle than skeletal muscle. HFABP is recommended to be measured with troponin to identify myocardial infarction and acute coronary syndrome in patients presenting with chest pain. Myoglobin having lower molecular weight appears early, but it is not a sensitive marker because it is also present in skeletal muscle. Cardiac-specific troponin T, or CTNT, and cardiac-specific troponin I, or CTNI, are regulatory proteins involved in myocardial contractility. CTNT and CTNI are highly sensitive and specific for damage to cardiac tissue. They are not normally detected in the blood of healthy individuals, but may increase after MI to levels greater than 20 times the upper reference range. Cardiospecific troponin T and I are particularly useful when there is a clinical suspicion of either skeletal muscle injury or a small MI that may be below the detection limit for CK and CKMB measurements. There's also the flipped pattern of LDH that needs to be considered. Normally, LDH2 is present in higher concentrations than LDH1, but this pattern is reversed, i.e., LDH1 is higher in MI. We should also talk about reperfusion injury markers in myocardial infarction. Reperfusion with oxygen allows recovery of oxidative phosphorylation if mitochondrial membrane has maintained some integrity. Reperfusion also increases the generation of oxygen and nitrogen free radicals, thereby further injuring the recovering cardiomyocytes. The extent of reperfusion injury can be determined by measuring blood levels of creatine kinase, myoglobulin, or CKMB. The reason for using CKMB over cardiac-specific troponin T, or CTNT, is because CKMB normally returns to baseline by 2-3 to three days, compared to CTNT, which usually takes 7-10 to 10 days. Let's consider the enzyme profile for liver diseases. Aminotransferases, or transaminases, are sensitive indicators of liver cell injury. Aspartate aminotransferase, or AST, is found mostly in all organs. Alanine aminotransferase, or ALT, is found primarily in the liver and is, therefore, a more specific indicator for liver disease than AST. In hepatocellular disease, ALT elevation is slightly higher than or equal to AST, so the AST-ALT ratio is less than 1. In cirrhosis, the ratio becomes greater than 1. Enzymes whose elevation in serum reflects cholestasis include 5' nucleotidase, which is more specific than ALP and GGT, alkaline phosphatase, or ALP, and gamma-glutamyl transferase, or transpeptidase, which is abbreviated GGT. This is mainly used to identify occult alcohol use. Enzyme markers in prostate cancer include tartarate labile acid phosphatase and prostate-specific antigen, or PSA. Let's talk about prostate-specific antigen a little more. 
It is also known as calicreon related peptidase 3, or KLK3. It is a serine protease, and it is secreted by epithelial cells of the prostate. This is prostate-specific, but not prostate cancer-specific. So PSA level estimation should be accompanied by prostate biopsy. A commonly used cut point for prostate cancer is a PSA level greater than 4 nanograms per milliliter. Now we can consider enzyme markers of pancreatitis. These include amylase and lipase. Serum amylase is not specific for pancreatic disease, as its level is increased in parotitis and urine also. A serum lipase, more specific, level measurement, can be used in differentiating a pancreatic or non-pancreatic cause for hyperamylacemia. Markers for bone formation include serum bone-specific alkaline phosphatase, or BAP, serum osteocalcin, and serum propeptide of type 1 procollagen. Markers of bone resorption include urine and serum cross-linked and telopeptide, urine and serum cross-linked C-telopeptide, and urine total free deoxypyridinoline. Here are some enzymes as markers of organelle and membranes. For the plasma membrane, the markers include 5' nucleotidase, adenylyl cyclase, for the endoplasmic reticulum, the marker enzyme is glucose 6-phosphatase. For the Golgi complex, the marker enzyme is galactosyl transferase. For the inner mitochondrial membrane, the marker enzyme is ATP synthase. For peroxisomes, the marker enzymes are catalase and urate oxidase. For lysosomes, the marker enzyme is cathepsin. And for the cytoplasm, the marker enzyme is lactate dehydrogenase. Here are some enzymes in other bodily fluids. The enzyme lactate dehydrogenase is in CSF, pleural fluid, and acidic fluid. And its clinical use is suggestive of malignant tumor, but it's not confirmatory. Adenosine deaminase is in pleural fluid, and its clinical use is that it is suggestive of tuberculosis pleural effusion, and amylase is in urine. It is suggestive of pancreatitis.